do blood cells come from? The creation of blood cells is called hematopoiesis. While in the embryo, there are multiple sites for hematopoiesis, blood creation. After birth, production primarily occurs in the bone marrow, in the red bone marrow. So while you're still in the womb, we have several locations for the creation of blood cells, hematopoiesis. Once you're born, this function is pretty much regulated to the red bone marrow. All blood cells that are circulating in your body, whether they are white or red or what have you, come from the same stem cell. Stem cells are cells that haven't differentiated yet. They don't know what they want to be when they grow up. They can grow up to be anything. So we have hematopoietic stem cells. These give rise to any and all blood cells in the body. So we have this common stem cell from which all blood cells come from, the hematopoietic stem cells. Then what occurs is we have hematopoietic growth factor. Hematopoietic growth factor, by the way, hematopoietic, try to say it in your daily conversation, a lot of fun to say, especially when you got a camera pointing at you. Anyhow, hematopoietic growth factor will help determine what the stem cell will grow into. So this factor comes in and helps to differentiate the cell. We have three families which the blood cells can grow into. The three families that the blood cell can grow up to be are the erythroid cells, which is your oxygen carrying red blood cells. Those are your RBCs, your red blood cells. You have your lymphocytes, which are the cornerstones of your adaptive immunity system, primarily made of your T cells and your B cells. And then you have the myelocytes. These are your innate immunity, blood clotting, adaptive immunity. The amount of red blood cells floating around in your body at any given time or circulating around your body at any given time is tightly regulated. You can see in this graphic that the principal factor that stimulates red blood cell production is urethroproietin, which is a type of hormone made mostly in the kidneys. Smaller portions are also made in the liver. And again, you can see in the graphic how the erythropoietin will pick up changes and stimulate the creation of more red blood cells. Vital to the creation of blood is vitamin B12 and folic acid. Now these two nutrients, these two vitamins are very important in the synthesis of DNA throughout the body. But what occurs here is that because blood cells are being created so quickly, and in such vast quantities, a deficiency in vitamin B12 and folic acid will show up there pretty early on. What occurs here is that the red blood cell doesn't really become the red blood cell. Instead, it becomes a humongous cell called the megaloblast. This is a larger cell. It has an irregular shape. It has a weak cell membrane. It is able to carry the oxygen, but because of its shape and size, as well as its weakened cell membrane, it busts, bursts, blows up a lot earlier than your normal red blood cell. Because of that, you might get a lack of blood carrying cells in the body, which can lead to anemia. In our next video, we're going to take a closer look specifically at the red blood cells.